Hello, I'm Emma Cohen and I'm Director of Studies um, for Human Sciences at Wadham College and I've decided along with um, a couple of students to put together a little interactive video um, for uh, prospective students who might be interested um, in Wadham and in Human Sciences because um, I thought it might be interesting to hear a little bit more from the students and not just from me uh, about the subject. So um, would you like to introduce yourselves? Who wants to go Hi. first? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Becca, I'm a second year, I'm a very enthusiastic human scientist. Uh, I'm that, Hannah, I'm first year, so I was in your shoes that one year ago now, two years ago. Um, but yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's not too long ago that you were in the, the same position as, as some of um, the people who might be watching and they're thinking about what college they might like to go to. Um, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, I suppose, that they might ask if, if they were able to join us in, in person. Um, and um, a couple of questions that you have for me about admissions um, and then maybe general comments. Um, so we'll be, try and be quite quick and snappy because I know people are under pressure in these open days and there's a lot, lot to take in. Um, so um, my question really is very, very general. What, what, what do you like about Wadham? What do you like about human sciences? Um, and maybe try to put those two together. What do you like about human sciences at Wadham? Oh, I think for me, it's just people who are there. I know it's a bit of a cliche, cheesy answer, but I remember being in first year, every time I talked to someone new, it'd be like, wow, a great, amazing, like interesting person. We've got so much to talk about. Um, and that was especially true with the human scientists that I met and that I continue to meet. I'm always like, wow, we have such similar interests. Um, and everyone has different things to say, which is just yeah it just creates these really amazing conversations that you learn so much from um and I think I probably learned more from maybe my peers no offense Emma <laughs> the, the, you know, you. the teaching is amazing as well but it's also the people that you get to talk to that's such a big experience of being um at Oxford and at Wadham particularly yeah no definitely same I remember going around on open day and asking all the students like ambassadors at Wadham what's your favorite thing Oh, like what sort of defines Wadham? And they said, the people are just really friendly. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's definitely true. And I'm sure the colleges say it too, but I think Wadham sort of definitely like embodies that spirit. Um, for example, you're allowed to walk on the grass. That also drew me to Wadham. Mm. That tells a lot about the rest of the college. Um, and yeah, it's just sort of beautiful. You've got the old, you've got the new, um, you've got really nice gardens right in the centre of Oxford. So it's a great place to be. Great, thank you. Um, wh what about the actual, um, academic side of things a bit more like in mm -hmm. terms of what's what's required of you and how it all works so what what's a week in the life of a human sciences student like for example or sort of how many lectures and tutorials do you have and how do things work uh hannah i guess um so at the moment i have roughly so the first year roughly two tutorials a week um and you sort of get to choose how you uh, put those two together so i've generally had one more social science tutorial so maybe sociology and maybe then genetics as well in the same week, which means you get a really nice mix up, different types of essays you're writing. Um, and then every week as well, we all come together as all the Wadden human scientists. So there's 12 of us um, with Emma, um, and we sort of talk about different sort of human science related topics in a much more sort of informal way. Um, and then I have about six hours of lectures a week, which currently are all online, so I can do them whenever I like. I'm still catching up on a few physiology lectures from this year. Um, but it's been, yeah, so it's an odd year, but um, lectures online have worked quite well for me. Mm. That's great. And do things change at all into second year, Becca, or is it sort of similar programme? Mm. Um, it's very similar for the first and second term, I'd say, um, although you get a bit more choice about what you do. You get to choose between doing anthropology and sociology, um, which is quite a nice, you know, you begin to get some more choice. And then third year, you get um, a lot more choice as well about what you're being taught in as you basically do um, mainly options, which are just like so amazing. The variety that you can do is really, really exciting. It took me ages to decide. Um, <laughs> and yeah, um, yeah, so basically at the end of second year, you have um, a lot less lectures and tutorials per week because you start having coursework, which is also um, a really fun experience because you get to go more in depth into something that you're particularly interested in and learn so much on it. Um, and go a little bit crazy with how much you know about this one thing and your friends might start to get a bit annoyed at how much you talk about it but that's okay <laughs> I wouldn't you can talk to me about it 
<laughs> so tell me actually, just, just for an illustration, what options did you pick for third year? Mm, um, so I picked one called Gender Theories and Realities Across Cultures, um, and it's taught mainly by the anthropology department, I think. Um, and then I also picked one called Health and Disease. And um, that's, I think the Health and Disease one is going to be more on the STEMI side and more incorporating um, like policy making as well. Um, and I just think it's quite a nice mix to get a more like social sciences one and a more STEM focused subject. Um, and particularly, I mean, because of the pandemic, I've been thinking that it's just a good idea to do something on health and disease. It seems very relevant. Um, and that's the good thing about the human sciences is that you can really explore what seems current and relevant within the framework of the course. And you have the opportunity to do that much more than other subjects, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. So do you have questions for me, the kinds of questions that you might have asked even yourselves at Open Day or you think people might be asking now? <clears throat> I guess sort of around admissions, I remember being sort of very, like I looked at so many statistics about who applied to which college for human scientists and which one would be easier to get into. Um, and just sort of how does that work with human scientists and does it matter what college you apply to? The short answer is no. I mean, the only, it only matters in terms of, you know, you apply to the college that you'd like to end up at. So colleges, they make decisions about admissions, but if a disproportionate number of applications go to any given college, we do have a system of reallocation um, that ensures that you know no no candidate is disadvantaged by applying to a particular college you know so the same standards apply across all colleges and we ensure through coordination that that, that applies to all applications as a, as a kind of gathered field of applications um, so because we have this system it means that there's no more you know it's no more difficult or easy to get in into Wadham or shortlisted for interview at Wadham than, than any other college um, um, it doesn't depend, you know, even on how many places there are at a particular college. So those numbers are, are irrelevant to this decision. Um, and reallocation can happen after interview as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely you should apply to the college that you'd most like to go to, um, even though you might not end up there, right? You might be shortlisted for interview um, at a different college, or you might be offered a place on the course after interview at a different college. Mm. Clear. Yeah. <laughs> now it is, eh? I know there's a lot of mystery and so many questions around that. So yeah, great question. Mm. <clears throat> um, I think another question would just be around the whole interview process and personal statements and what kind of things you're looking for. I remember being so nervous before going into my interview and thinking, you know, how do I need to act for them to want me to be on this course? Um, yeah, but what generally are you looking for in those processes? Yeah, um, so yeah, the personal statement is one part of the application that you have, you know, a you can be a little bit more creative with. Everything else is kind of just, you know, noting your grades and so on. Um, and this part of the application allows you to tell us about your interests and experiences um, and a little bit more about yourself generally. Um, so it helps us understand what interests you about the subject area and, and why you're interested in it. Um, so I'll say we, we read the personal statements with interest um, and you know often they are a kind of jumping off point for interviews even, um, but I would say don't fret too much about it. You know, they're information about you. You don't, you, you know, <laughs> your application won't stand or fall um, on, on the content of a personal statement. Um, interviews are a little bit different right so interviews um they normally last about 25 minutes or so and they go by in a flash i don't know if you found that mm -hmm. a little bit of a blur <laughs> um but they are designed um to enable us um as admissions um tutors to assess um prospective students ability and and potential on attributes that we think are important for, for enabling students to do really well and to thrive on the human sciences course. So um, the questions that we ask um, and the conversation that we have in that time um, is designed to help the, the prospective student, the applicant demonstrate their enthusiasm and interest in human sciences um, and an intellectual curiosity about problems that are relevant to the human sciences. Um, we're also looking for ability to see things in context and see problems, um, questions and so on in, in broader context and make connections across areas because human science is, as you said, it's very um, multidisciplinary, it's interdisciplinary. Um, and it's a course that requires students to make connections across different ways of thinking um, and different bodies of knowledge or evidence. Um, 
so that's important. Um, also, it's important for us to be able to gauge your engagement with ideas um, and your readiness um, to modify ideas in light of evidence. Um, so that sometimes is, is called critical thinking, right? And that's really what, what we're interested in there is where you, you don't just take things at face value, um, but you consider them thoughtfully in light of evidence and allow the mm. evidence to guide your thinking and opinions. And in an interview context, you know, we might sort of feed bits of evidence to sort of um, foster your thoughtfulness and your ideas. And um, that's part of the conversation. So you shouldn't feel under pressure to kind of think, oh, what did I learn about this for A level or IB or whatever it might be? Um, and how can I bring this in now? Oh, yes, great. I did this at school. We're actually looking for you to kind of set that to one side or, you know, mm -hmm. um, think, think fresh about something. Um, and then finally, um, I think this kind of falls out of those other kind of criteria, the capacity to form your own, you know, personal point of view and, and express that. So independent, independent thought is important. Um, so it's important as well to, you know, engagement and thinking independently is about, you know, perhaps even you asking us questions. Um, I'm not saying you must, but, you know, in order to kind of think about something constructively, it's a, it's a conversation. It's not a test you know, in some way, I think that might easily be construed given your experience of these kinds of um, processes before. So, I mean, that really is all there is to it. Um, there is no, we've no tricks, there's no games. You don't have to, you know, wear what makes you feel comfortable. You don't have to shake our hand in a particular way. All of that other stuff, all that lore that you've heard, you know, it's just, it doesn't, doesn't play into this process at all. Um, so I think that's all on that. I don't know if that will hope will dispel some mystery about interviews, but is there anything that you wish that you had known or really sort of taken at face value actually, or taken, taken to heart um, before you applied or before you came to interview or anything that you think might be useful, a gem of wisdom, now that you're on the other side of that threshold and that process? Do you want to go first, Becca? Yeah, sure, sure. So um, I think it's really good to know that, you know, as you said, Emma, you guys don't expect us to know everything when we come to interviews and it's okay to say I don't know. Um, I think when you realise that it's so much more calm because you can, they can ask you a question and you can say, I don't know, but, and then you can start to sort of think about it and show them your thinking and they're so much more interested in how you think and the process. Um, even if it's very speculative and you don't actually have much to back up, that thinking, you know, just that process um, is really what they're interested in. And I think showing your curiosity as well can be so valuable um, because it is a conversation and therefore like showing how you're engaged in that conversation and um, curious to hear what you know, the other person has to say. Um, I think that makes a quite a big di difference. Um, and yeah, those are, I think those are two things that, would make me feel calmer going <laughs> into interviews. Mm -hmm. Great. And I Anna. think I remember sort of writing my personal statement and it felt like the most important thing. And I read it mm. back just before interviews and it made no sense. It was clearly like I was so stuck. <laughs> I read it back. I was like, how am I going to defend this in my interview? Like, I, I, this isn't true. Um, but by the time you get that, you realize it's about sort of like, much more nuanced things and it's um they give you often like they'll give you either a picture or a graph mm. to look at um something to feed off of and I remember getting mm. to my first interview at Wadham and they gave you 20 minutes to look at a sheet about sort of there's information sort of genetic um mm. it, was, it was a disease a genetic disease and it had lots of sort of different graphs about different prevalences in different populations and I looked at it and went I didn't do a level biology but that's not what really matters um mm -hmm. and it's about they, they know that they know what background you've got and it's more about how you interpret it um from the different interesting thoughts you're having while looking at it and then for my second interview i got a graph about um sort of link how languages have changed um as mm -hmm. they sort of um came across europe and that was much more up my street um <laughs> so i think it's just yeah really interesting because it is such a big mix you're going to have something that you get along much better with the interviews and some things you really don't um, and that's okay. They don't care about what your previous knowledge is. It's about how you sort of go into it um, and how you're thinking about things in that moment. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And just listening to you talking, I think probably the best preparation for interview is to have conversations. 
um, about these things, have conversations about something you might have read in some science magazine and, and you know, get people to play devil's advocate, you know, where they don't, they don't agree with you on something, but you still have to kind of hold an argument. It's not really a normal conversation in that sense, but it's good to, I think that would be a good kind of practice for an interview rather than kind of pour in other textbooks or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I is there like a, of, sorry, Hannah, go. There's a, like lots of popular like science books, like Sapiens and things. Most human scientists mm. have sort of them. Since. So like also just those sort of popular books that maybe your dad's read or someone you know has read and you can sort of just try and explain different concepts from it. They're sort of quite good things to sort of get ideas of sort of, not interview questions, but used to talking about those sorts of topics. Um, it doesn't have to be some super mm -hmm. academic thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so give your parents some reading as well. <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see um thank you so much um hannah and becca um is there anything else any parting gems of wisdom or do you think we've we'll not draw it out um i just think human science is the best course to apply to so if you're watching this video you're making good choices already <laughs> <laughs> and, and what yeah. Are... yeah and what especially all the other human scientists are jealous of what because we have our own little discussion seminar <laughs> so yeah apply to tea and cake, but we've had yeah. to prepare our own tea and cake this year haven't we because we've been all in different places okay thank you um <laughs> and and thanks to anyone who's watched us um enjoy open day um and maybe maybe we'll meet you one day um so thanks bye, bye. <laughs>